All right, welcome everybody today. Um, my name is Dr. Taws. Uh, I am a family medicine physician for Baptist Primary Care and uh, was reached out to try and engage with the community and hopefully uh, go over this topic, um, tuning in about uh, energy drinks. So they've been getting a lot of uh, not only publicity, they're on the shelves, uh, and there are a ton of different kinds of them. Uh, and so to dive into a little bit about um, you know, what is the difference between sodas, sports drinks, energy drinks? You know, we're all uh, got to stay hydrated, everybody. Uh, but when we're reaching for the you go into the store uh, on the shelves, there are lots of different options. So really seeing what's the difference about some of these. So um, here I presented there's uh, really three different categories. They're a little similar. Uh, so we have your sodas, sports drinks, energy drinks. So uh, there's actually some uh, rules and regulations provided from the FDA about there's a cap about how much caffeine that you can have into um, a soda drink. And so sports drinks, those typically don't have any caffeine while they still have your high fructose syrup, similar to the sodas. Um, they also come along with those electrolytes that you, you burn through during exercise, exercise and getting you rehydrated. But energy drinks, um, they recently came onto the scene a uh, little around 30 years ago. The uh, first pioneer really being Red Bull uh, and it sort of their origins um, from Southeast Asia, Thailand, and went across to Australia and then came over here. And uh, not a lot of regulations about um, what can be in there because uh, it actually is classified as um, uh, nutrition supplement. So uh, because it has plenty of your other vitamins like um, B12, and we'll dive into some of the other ones, it's um, trying to get you that extra pep in your step. And that's what, really what the advertisers are going for. Um, so yeah, you're reaching for some caffeine and some sugar in your sodas. Um, but there's, uh, let's, we'll dive into some of the labels. And so we can see some of the differences there. So pulling up first in this example of um, a, a soda, um, a soft drink, uh, whatever you, you're um, privy for, for calling it. So there's plenty of them. I use this as a Dr. Pepper as um, as example here. And, and you can see that um, a lot of the calories are coming straight from your carbohydrates. Uh, there's um, 40 grams of sugar in those in that that bottle here and using as a, a bottle as a as a 16, 12 16 ounce cans but um, trying to get to everybody I encourage um, not only my patients but family friends really reading those labels really understanding how to read those labels as you can see it's a lot of um, uh, sugar in there coming from that high fructose corn syrup uh, other things in there really just to stabilize it um, keep it in that bottle keep it fresh and um, and bubbly so uh, and then you see that that caffeine. Now you see that caffeine isn't listed there on the left hand side. Um, it's not um, something that they have to report about how many milligrams there are, but um, that's usually around um, 30 to uh, 70 milligrams of caffeine. And so uh, comparing that next to our, our um, soft drinks, um, using an example as, as Powerade, um, a, a similar amount of calories and also similarly a lot coming straight from your sugars. So, uh, but in addition, instead of, we don't see those uh, vitamin uh, B6, uh, vitamin B12, and then it also has your niacin, some potassium, uh, in order to use some of those electrolytes that are uh, also trying to re replace. That's why, you know, exercise, trying to replace those, get you wrecked up for your uh, next uh, um, training session. So, uh, as you can see, the caffeine is what's lacking, but uh, it's sort of replaced with those vitamins and um, electrolytes to replace. Now, uh, getting into the energy drinks, um, such as Red Bull, that's a that comes along with sort of a combination of the two. Now, the calories, yeah, that's not as much, but remember, it's a, using an example. Uh, Red Bull has uh, a lot of um, your calories from your sugars. So remember, that's just 27 grams and eight ounces of water. But not only do you get the niacin, the B6, the B12 um, front that you also see in your sports drinks, but it's also coming with your, your caffeine. So uh, here in energy drinks, because of the nutritional supplements um, that they uh, are sort of ruled here, that they, while the caffeine 
percent is just 80 milligrams right there like um sort of i use the description like flat but as you dive into some of those other ingredients down there so um uh, there's uh, some of the other ones that you might not be completely familiar with but they there's uh, uh contents in there that additionally have their own caffeine and those aren't always um expressed in uh, the total caffeine amount so there are additives inside those energy drinks that really add on uh, to the energy drinks one advertised a lot is uh, you can see in taurine down there I hope you guys can see that um, uh, on whatever device you're on but that's uh, one of the common amino acids that has, um, found in um, it comes from animal products but it's one that has has become a name or sort of infamous about um, give you pep in your step about the energy drinks um, and so we'll, we'll dive into a couple of ones um, in regards to where some extra caffeine is coming from, not only just the straight caffeine that's there. So um, on our next slide, um, it's sort of breaking down, you know, see, getting back to some of the comparisons of caffeine in your Coca-Colas or soft drinks compared to coffee and energy drinks. So as I was getting to the, uh, uh, as to be a soda, there are FDA regulations on how much caffeine you can put in there. Comparatively, if you're drinking a coffee, can get you um, about two to three times as much caffeine in one of in a soda. But you can really see on this slide that up to 500 milligrams of your energy drinks can can be contained in caffeine. So, and you know, with the has your caffeine, sometimes they do uh, put it on the labels how much is in there. But it can really stack up when you're adding on some of the ginseng, um, uh, other additives, or the vitamin nutritional supplements that are added onto in those um, the, uh, those uh, additives. So, um, and you know, well, okay, what's um, what's the caffeine? Yeah, that's the really the get up and go. It has effects on a lot of different parts of the bodies. We have those receptors uh, in our heart, in our brain, in our kidneys. Uh, and so that can lead to some effects if we um, too much of it. And yes, uh, like anything, uh, or like most things, you should be able or should understand that having too much of it can be detrimental to your health. And so a uh, lot of caffeine can have those uh, really make you jittery, uh, really being anxious, it revs up your heart at a really fast rate. Uh, and so you can have that uh, uh, intoxication feeling and then really being uh, there is such a thing as uh, caffeine overdose. And so as you uh, if you've um, been drinking plenty of your sodas or coffee and you notice you know, one day I, I drink it at the same time and I don't have it. So it is actually um, a drug because you notice and you get that headache if you don't have it. So um, and diving into some of the uh, physiology of it uh, and to see that um, it has those effects on many different parts of the body. So um, taking a look at some of these effects uh, uh, that it has on us, um, we can, those muscles that we have, uh, they can start to tremor, seize. So seizures is um, uh, a sign of overdose, really having a uh, fast heart rate. And as a um, plug in that a normal heart rate is anywhere between 60 to 100. So and that's at rest. But if you're at rest, and you've uh, had uh, too much caffeine, you can get that irregular rhythm and sometimes, or I should say fast heart rate, and sometimes you can have an irregular rhythm. Um, other things uh, that headache, um, unable to sleep, so the restless feeling, uh, that's really um, affecting our brain as well. So now having that kind of an intake, some people don't have that uh, as much um, uh, effect as others. Some people, you know, you can see them, they're drinking plenty of coffee throughout the day and it's being digested. And so um, some studies have been showing that less than 400 milligrams um, of caffeine is, uh, per day is safe. But, you know, if you can easily reach that if having multiple um, a certain kind of uh, energy drinks. Um, and so uh, diving in, into about some of the um, effects on our heart. So when using different receptors, there it's called chronotropic or 
ionotropic effects. And so we have these receptors on our heart muscles and on our other muscles that um, that caffeine is going to really uh, attach to and cause the, that rapid beat um, along with um, af affecting the other systems about when your heart does race. And you have other uh, effects of that too. Your, um, some of the vessels in your brain, they start to squeeze or vasoconstrict. And so that can start some of that. Um, so you're not having all that blood straight flowing there. Uh, but not all, also on, onto your lungs. Um, it can um, it can affect them there. Uh, having some exertional, uh, or I should say, when you're exercising or doing things, uh, that you have some uh, difficulty breathing. But it's, uh, now it's all not all gloom and doom. But because there are some times where you know that caffeine does have, has been shown to also have um, anti-inflammatory or um, like uh, it's calming down any an inflammation or a bronchoprotective effect. Now. There are also some studies too about how um, caffeine can um, open things up and and get everything like that um, uh, ex excitability get up and go before you're taking um, uh, sports or workout. So, but uh, getting circling back to the. Um, energy drinks, though, they're not just uh, what they say, vitamins. So um, some of the other ones, uh, the taurine, the panax ginseng root, and um, those are also um, have their sort of, they've been the uh, hot topics of, uh, and then the guarana. So all of these, uh, well, I should say guarana and ginseng, they can have some caffeine in it, the taurine, an amino acid that's an additive. So uh, these are all, or the two of them to ginseng and guarana are plant-based. Uh, taurine actually is mainly found in animal products. And, um, it, and so it's extracted, condensed, and uh, has those kind of additive effects. And uh, now, when looking into some studies about what kind of effects that, that they have. Now, yeah, it does. Um, uh, clearly, that's why people are drinking on those because that concentration, reaction time, alertness has been shown to uh, be improved with one of these. But w what else is um, really coming along with uh, intake of that much uh, caffeine? because it's not just coming with one after the other, because sort of when you have your basics, uh, comparing that this to the soda, the, it's a lot of sugar and caffeine. So now when you start layering sugar, caffeine, oh, sorry, if we could go back, uh, may I begin? Thank you. Um, uh, these layered on top of uh, the, uh, of, on top of each other can have their additive effects. And it's hard to tease out and really decipher what is doing what to which and so when you just have an onslaught of all these different um, uh, amino acids or proteins enzymes they can um, really stack up on top of each other so um, in in doing looking into those studies when taurine and caffeine are combined um, there were some athletes that were studied and showing that the one of the chambers in your heart it can increase in that contractility. So you're getting a big squeeze out of the, out of your heart. And so, but it's, it's tough, tough to really tease out. Okay. You add some ginseng into that and then do a study. You add guarana and do a study into that. So you can see how sometimes it can get a little murky and especially uh, too much of anything can, can be detrimental too. So, um, and looking into, um, how much, that has on other effects with you with those sugars if we're continuing to do that uh, in and day out um, and now diving into the sugars next I, I threw in this slide to really uh, get to, uh, an image to uh, to yourself and so uh, I like this image I studied chemistry as undergrad and so it gives you an idea these are um, two readily available uh, as sources of energy on we see glucose there as one and fructose as the other so well why is this really important so the glucose is readily available and we have studies showing out there that how much of uh, you know high fructose corn syrup and we see on all those labels how that has a, has an effect on our metabolism how that changes with our insulin and really plays qu quite closely into diabetes. So um, how we regulate our body 
we have to do, not getting too technical into it, um, but the fructose is not just as, it needs to go through a lot of different pathways in order for it to become readily available as energy that we can use in our brain and our tissues. So um, now glucose, that's something that it can be quickly metabolized and and our body can uh, burn that off frequently, but we need a lot of us in order to make that fructose fructose turn into glucose or readily to burn sugar. So um, uh, tying that into um, the grand scheme of things is while all three of them really, a lot of those sugars are coming from uh, the high fructose corn syrup, having that glucose coming from healthy fruits and vegetables like your um, apples the, with the fiber and your oranges, bananas. So those have the, the, the glucose in it. So uh, those are some help, uh, aspects to uh, get that energy for you to um, to go and and of course uh, staying hydrated with water and I know reaching for um, uh, trying to find something that give you that energy but to try and find it within and getting out there doing the exercise um, that'll also uh, do all of those things by just taking a walk to really open up those vessels to get that heart uh, beating and get the blood to um, all the parts of your body. So, um, and getting to, um, uh, tying it into some uh, sort of uh, uh, mind's eye thing. Do you have um, a, a question for everybody out there? So if um, on the next slide, just trying to see, you know, when reaching for that can um, and how much water is there to have a visual of how much sugar is in there. So I have a question here about uh, using tablespoons as an amount of sugar to, so you can really next time you're in, hopefully you can be in the kitchen sometime soon and um, see, but how much, uh, how many tablespoons there are in just 12 ounces of Dr. Pepper. So some of the options here are, is like 1.8 tablespoons, 2.3, 2.8 or 3.3. So I hope you I get into, into your image, you know, sort of ballpark. Well, how much if I just poured two tablespoons of uh, onto the table, how much sugar that would look like? And so um, uh, give some time to think about it and to actually think that there's the answer is closest to C is 2.8. So that's almost three tablespoons of sugar glued or mixed into that can of Coke. So imagine having 12 ounces of water, diluting all that sugar in there, and then um, you know, right there. I don't know if that'd be too tasty for everybody, but um, so just as remember, I know it, uh, it's tasty every once in a while, but it can, um, that glucose, the caffeine, other energy drinks can have the um, some unintended consequences if we're taking some of these things day in and day out. So I'll go ahead and um, look over to the, some of the comments. And um, I have one question here about would tea with caffeine, like green tea, be, an, be a better option than energy drinks? Um, now, yeah, green tea is a great option. The amount of caffeine in that is um, close to about a quarter of what you would find in um, the in something like coffee directly. But green tea is a good option. Um, and actually, uh, however you like it, the warm or cold, it does have some, uh, it's all, it has good effects. It's more hydrating as well. So you'll have some caffeine in there, but it won't be at the same levels. And there's lots of different studies too about um, uh, on this topic of caffeine and coffee and its pr um, protectiveness. So while um, it does to carry a lot of caffeine, uh, a little bit of, goes a long way in regards to um, having some caffeine intake, but green tea is also a better option or is a good option. And because it has less caffeine, it has less of a um, diuretic effect. And what I mean by that is uh, the caffeine, especially with coffee, that can um, just to lose more fluid. So make us urinate. And uh, that way we're sort of dehydrating ourselves with how much um, we're, we're holding on to. And uh, another comment here, a uh, question was about energy drinks with alcohol. So that's a good question, um, especially about the, um, some of the, um, I know the, I think that there was a big uh, craze, if it is still there, about uh, vodka Red Bulls or um, I think the two. So 
Um, I use the analogy, um, I like this a, a few different times on things. It's imagine uh, you're driving a car and putting both or one foot on the accelerator and one foot on the brake. So uh, if you do that at the same time, your engine's not really going to like that. And so um, uh, caffeine and all the um, other additives that we were talking about, the high fructose corn syrup, the guarana, the taurine, um, uh, revving up that system. And then the alcohol. initially you're going to have that uh, sort of a synergistic effect, but then the alcohol actually uh, gives you a peak and then slows you uh, slows things down. So um, alcohol actually does stop the metabolism of readily available or making your sugars available. So it's sort of like keeping a cat gas tank and you're still um, revving that up. So it's a uh, not a, a, very, a good safe combination because you're um, uh, their additive effects of being diuretics, as previously mentioned, with the alcohol and and the caffeine, losing a lot of fluid. You're um, making your uh, heart pump even further. You're having those effects of the alcohol with, you know, you're fighting the your blood vessels are opening up and closing up. So it's a lot of um, um, tension that you're giving your body on those talking getting circling back to those ionotropes or th receptors in your muscle heart um, that's uh, that they're getting a lot of mixed messages and putting a lot of strain on your body when you're mixing those as well um, so and um, overall uh, make sure that while we're we're all trying to find that energy but I think that um, sort of the getting to the basics of things having it starts with a good night of rest um and waking up nice and early and always staying well hydrated through the day and staying active actually is um you'd, it may sound counterintuitive sometimes but energy does beget energy if you work out a little bit and keep and stay active that you're going to find yourself that you're going to feel like you have more energy and less fatigue uh, the more you get up taking some walks and uh, we always recommend 150 minutes of exercise a week and if that's uh, three days a week of an hour or five days a week at 30 minutes and really getting that heart rate to um, whatever safely um, elevations you can get so uh, I hope my everybody learned a little something out there and a little more cognizant of um, some of the energy drinks that are out there and, and get you understanding what are some other things that uh, might not see immediately onto the on your label bottle uh, when drinking it next time. And I hope everybody has their own primary care doctor. And if not, then um, we're over here and at Baptist Primary and ready to take care of you guys. So, uh, hope all is well and everybody stay safe.